Hi guys, my name is Alex and on this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to walk you through how you guys can start making your very own miniatures. So, the tools you're going to want are a pair of needle nose pliers, some wire cutters, and of course the wire. The wire that I generally use is about 0.05 centimeters in width. You're also going to want some rubber sculpting tools. The two that I tend to use the most would be the angled chisel tool and this kind of circular chisel tool. On the other side of these tools that I have, I've also got these metal spheres. And I find that the best ones are the smallest sphere and this kind of oval sphere that they also have. You're also going to want a craft knife. And I also have a file and this flat sculpting tool that I got with my set of green stuff. And the last thing you're going to need is the aforementioned green stuff, which comes in these strips of yellow and blue. So, when you make your armature, you're going to want to straighten out a long piece of wire, and you're going to want to cut it with your wire cutters. Then you can fold it in half a little bit with just your hands, and then take your needle nose pliers to clamp it down to make sure it's nice and tight. So it kind of looks like this, two wires very close together. Then you're going to want to take these two wires and split them apart and start twisting them. And it's very important that you twist them evenly to make sure that the uh, twist that you put into your armature is nice and tight and isn't like loose and bendy. This just makes it easier when you pose the miniature later. I find the torso, you kind of want it to be around one centimeter, as you can see here. Maybe a little bit more is fine. And then you're going to want to bend in the hips for the miniature. I think what I did here was a little bit bigger than you're generally going to want to do it, but there is a lot of leeway with how uh, wide you make the hips and your uh, shoulders for your miniature. So when you're bending in the knees, you want it to be about 0.7 centimeters so that the legs are a total of 1.5 centimeters. And now you can go in and bend the knees into your miniature. Um, here you see I bend it backwards and then forwards. Uh, and this kind of creates what's going to be the calf of the miniature when we start adding more green stuff. And then you can bend out the feet. Once you've got the legs done, you can start working on the arms. And so you're gonna to wanna to cut another piece of wire out and you're going to bend a loop into it using your needle nose pliers. And you take that piece of wire with a loop in it and you put the loop over top of your torso towards the top of your torso and clamp it down with some pliers to hold it in place until you can put some glue on it to make sure it stays there. And so then your armature should be about 2.5 centimeters tall. We can then start posing the miniature. And an important thing to keep in mind is that this wire that runs along the torso is basically going to act as the spine. So the first thing you should do when you're doing this is making sure you bend that to make it actually act in the way that a spine would. Then you can go and bend down the arms and start forming out the torso. Uh, keeping in mind that these bends that you're making here are basically going to act as the shoulders. Probably the best thing that you can do when posing your miniatures is actually have reference up on your computer so that you can figure out what the pose will actually look like that you're trying to go for. You can then bend out the length of the feet, making sure to bend all of the excess wire down so you can put that into a cork bottle or just maybe like a wine cork or something along those lines, re-gluing the arms as needed. The cork bottle or whatever you end up using is very important for actually sculpting the miniature later on since it acts as a handle. So what you're then going to want to do is take your file and uh, file down the miniature a little bit to kind of give it a little bit of uh, tooth and that way the green stuff that you add on later will stick to it better. Speaking of which, you're then going to take your green stuff and you're going to take an equal amount of the yellow and blue stuff, I guess you can call it, and you're gonna to wanna to start mixing that together. And wouldn't you know it, anyone who's done any amount of color theory would know, you mix those together and you get green stuff. Bet you didn't see that coming. Once you've mixed that up so that is a uniform color, you can start actually adding that onto your armature. I find that where you can, it's helpful to 
kind of stick it onto part of the armature and then twist it around the uh, wire that you're trying to cover in green stuff and then kind of blending that in later once you've kind of got a little bit on. You don't have to be super precise with this, uh, but sometimes I notice it is, can be helpful to get a rubber tool to just kind of make sure that it's actually going on in a uniform coat onto your armature. Again, you don't have to be super precise with this. This is just going to be the first layer, so that make, is going to make it easier to sculpt on later. And depending on what plans you have for your miniature, you might want to add more green stuff. So for the guy that I'm making here, I want him to be kind of like a barrel chested barbarian type. So for that, I'm going to be adding more green stuff to the chest so that it's going to be nice and kind of broad. And here I'm again adding it with a rubber tool, but it doesn't have to be super, super precise. I'm just making sure that it's well connected to the rest of the armature. And here I'm also adding a little bit to the legs since I wanted those to be kind of built out a little bit as well. So we can now move on to sculpting some details onto our miniature. And the first thing that I would like to mention in this regard would be anatomy. So anatomy is the kind of thing that is really, really important to have a basic grasp of when you're sculpting miniatures so that even if you're applying clothing over an arm or a body, you actually have an idea of what's going on underneath so that the clothing um, sits properly on the miniature when you're sculpting it. The best way I find to do this is to practice with miniatures that um, perhaps like in this guy, I'm not, I plan on not giving him a shirt so that you can see all of the musculature underneath and that gives me a good chance to practice my anatomy. And as I mentioned before, having reference for this kind of thing is very, very helpful. Oftentimes you can probably just use the same reference image you were using for your pose. And that should give you a good idea of how the muscles on your miniature are going to contour depending on what kind of pose you're going for. And while not every miniature you sculpt is going to be ripped beyond belief, having a basic understanding of anatomy can be very, very helpful as you develop as a sculptor. I find it's a really important thing to have kind of in the back of your brain as you're sculpting a miniature because if you don't keep that in mind, some of your minis can look a little bit wonky. What you'll notice here is that I didn't put the musculature on the legs because I wanted to show off a trick that I use very consistently when making miniatures, and that is how to do baggy pants. I find when I'm not entirely sure what to do for the legs, a good default is just to give them some baggy pants. So as you can see on screen, I had a big old chunk of green stuff onto the legs and start working it into the general shape of what the pants will be, just trying to add basically a fairly thick coat over the armature that I've made. You can kind of see that I added a little bit too much, so I just kind of with a rubber tool start dragging that to the other leg since I'm still going to need some on the other one. And this is the kind of thing that you'll just get better at the more you sculpt, just being able to manipulate the green stuff on your miniature. Once I have it in the shape that I want it, I start adding in the folds of the pants. So I start by hitting it with a uh, one of the metal tools that I've got here, trying to kind of sculpt in little zigzags towards the bottom of the pants where the clothing will bunch up. And once I have that to a place where I like it, I take my rubber tools and smooth it out. Because when you're working with the metal tools, the green stuff often likes to stick to the metal tools and leaves a weird texture on your miniature. So you're going to want to go over it with a rubber tool to make sure it's nice and smooth. And this is often where I will use the kind of chisel tool that I mentioned earlier. The other thing I want to show you how to do that is kind of similar to the pants is making wraps. So this is something that is a good way of adding just a little bit of detail to a miniature. I use it a lot in the goblins video that I released last week. It's a good way of doing footwear for like more tribal or barbarian type characters as well as adding detail to more grungy characters. So just like before, I add on a layer of green stuff where I want to put the wrap on. And once I've done that, I smoothen it out a little bit. And then I can start adding in the folds. And this time I just go straight in with the 
uh, chisel tool that I mentioned earlier and just start adding all these different folds coming in at different angles slightly randomly but making sure that none of these lines actually cross over but that they act kind of like clothing folds. Again, this is the kind of thing that is very helpful to have reference for so that you can figure out the way the material twists and folds. I do also have planned a more in-depth video on how to do material and textiles for capes, cloaks, and billowy robes, so you can look forward to that in a couple weeks. The other thing that I find myself doing a lot is creating a fur texture. So the way that you do this is you add a little bit of green stuff and you get a needle and you start kind of poking at your green stuff that you've just applied for where you want the fur texture. Trying to focus on making a bunch of small little locks of fur. It's not incredibly difficult to do once you kind of get the hang of it, but you can kind of see here how I'm creating indentations trying to make little bits of locks of fur or locks of hair to create the fur texture. This again is just a really good skill to have because I find that I often will use this in different miniatures that I'm making as just details. A little bit of fur here, a little bit of fur there, especially for the barbaric types, but even for more regal characters they'll often have like a fur lined coat or something like that. So being able to do this texture is really, really useful. You can kind of see here that I gloss over the belts that I made for this miniature, but I'm going to do a more in-depth video on how to make belts and pouches and also how to paint leather because there's this very specific way that you have to do that. And the very last thing I want to show you guys is probably the most useful technique that I figured out, and that is how to create defined and clear separations between pieces of green stuff that you've added onto your miniature. As you can see here, the green stuff that I've added here for the pauldron is just kind of slapped on. But what I start to do is push up with a rubber tool uh, towards the edge that I want on the pauldron and then pull the green stuff over where I put that edge and do that over and over and over again and you'll notice that the shape that I'm creating, this kind of, like, kind of square shape that I'm creating for the pauldron, gets more and more defined. And this is a really, really important technique for how to manipulate green stuff, because this is useful for most anything. Here I'm using it to make the edges of the pauldron, but I often use this technique also for defining the differences between clothing and an arm if you have like a short sleeve shirt or something. Thank you so much for watching that video. I hope you found it helpful, especially for those of you who are trying to get into miniature sculpting. So if you have any ideas for things you would like me to show you how to do, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, next week I plan on going into more depth about how I sculpt faces, and the week after that I'm hoping to do something on clothing, cloaks, and stuff like that. So once again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, please subscribe, leave a comment. All this stuff is really helpful for a small channel, so if you don't mind doing that, I would really, really appreciate it. And as always, I will see you in the next one.